All right, so we got a 9420 here, or at least what's left of it. The rest of it's all sitting up there. So what's going on here is they have this carrier bearing going out. They've changed it twice, I think now, and it's gone out pretty much immediately every time. So they said so they're tired of changing it. Something else is wrong. Got to pull that center shaft out to find the problem. If it's bent or something like that, they changed this shaft and the U joints and all that stuff to make sure that wasn't the problem. Well, it wasn't. So to get that shaft out, you have to take this whole shaft out straight from the back. It slides straight up the middle. I have a crossbar in there so I can loosen that front nut. That didn't work too bad. Um, but in doing this, I realized that this U joint is definitely out. So that could be the vibration that they were having to knock that front bearing out. I don't know for sure yet. When we were uh, driving it in here, we noticed that this yoke right here, which goes on the front of this here, it seemed to be wiggling and not straight. Now, was that caused by the bearing being out or is the shaft bent? A little hard to tell yet. So we'll get the shaft pulled out and find out what's going on. So the guys that brought it to me, they brought me this tool as well that they built. I don't know what all they did to build it, but anyway, got a socket on there. You can put a three quarter inch bar on it. And this thing goes on here like that. And you put bolts in there to hold it onto the bearing and then you can turn it because this whole thing turns in there apparently. So I don't exactly know how that all looks and without this tool, I'm not sure what I would do, but apparently you need that tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that mounted up and see once how that works. Also, this wheel seal was leaking pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart and change that bearing. I don't think I'm gonna do a video on this one. Uh, it's pretty much identical to the 8420, which I have a video on that. So if you wanna go watch that video, you can on how to change a wheel seal there. I think the axle shaft is the same size as well. At least the other 9420 I did was the same size as their 8420, so this one might be different. I don't know yet. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get that shaft tore out of there and hopefully find a problem. Okay, so got a jack in here, but unfortunately it's just pushing the whole bearing assembly back in. So that's not getting me anywhere right now. I guess once it finally gets back in there, maybe it'll start pushing it out. So I'm not, not sure what's going on there, while that's still stuck up there. But uh, yeah, fun times. Okay, so quick update. I tried to push that shaft out, and just pushed the whole carriage back in. And I guess it's splitting it right here. So. I'm going to tighten this front back up again and then try to push that bearing out of there or push the shaft out. So I'm kind of doing this backwards. I'll get it done here eventually, I guess. Okay, so we got this apart here now. You can see this is that front piece here. There is a uh, wear disc or bushing disc and a plate here to go in here. And that turns into there. There's a bunch of grease and some ball bearings I got to clean out of there. So that finally came out. Um, here's my drive shaft. Of course, this U joint's junk too, but you're probably not gonna be able to see it. Maybe you can. It is bowed pretty bad. This is the high side here, and there's the low side over there. So it, uh, 
it got bent somehow. Not exactly sure how, if they power hopped it or what, what they did, but that's why their bearings are going out. All right, so got this axle apart. I wasn't gonna take a video of this, but I decided to after all. It's pretty simple. Um, you just split this here. I'll have to take this off and, and reseal this ring right here for this planetary gear, but it didn't come off this time, so I left it on there. Stuck a bolt back in there for security. Get that off, and then there's one nut or one big bolt here. Just down inside there. It's held on by this funny looking ring. And then this goes on top of that. Yeah, this O-ring just to hold it from popping up. And this just is basically a lock washer. Anyway, you get that out of there. And then I just used a puller and built some flat irons with the hook there to lift that off real nice. But the reason I wanted to show you this is because these here bushings or spacers, whatever they are, um, shims, I guess, they don't look real healthy. And that's why it was loose, because they obviously weren't doing their job anymore and created it to be loose. So that's why the seal's leaking and most likely why, well, I hope the bearings aren't that bad of shape, but we're gonna change them anyway. So that's, that's, what, that's how it is to come apart. It's pretty simple. Um, going back together, we'll have to get the space perfectly, which takes quite a bit of doing to get that spaced right and not have it loose. Okay, so I got this all apart here. And uh, this bearing on the bottom is this big one right here. It's pretty hard to come off. You just got to beat it off. And if you want to cut it off, you maybe can do that too. Um, just be careful, obviously. The top bearing... You saw how I got that off, just pushing the bottle jack down on top and popped right, that right off. Um, this inner race, or out of race right here, the way I get it out is I come over here to my puller tool that I took apart and I just get up underneath it there in that groove and I start to pry out, just beating on this with a hammer back and forth. Then I put wedges underneath that and keep working up. And that comes out fairly easily. It does take time, but it does come out. So now I have the new ones, the new outer races in the freezer and the bearings in the oven. And that way the bearings will just fall on there. I mean, literally fall on there when you get them hot enough. You won't have to do any pounding. Uh, the top one's a bit more tricky because you got to torque it down pretty much right as you put it on. So you got to put the bottom one on, or the outside one on, the inner one, after you get all this stuff on. So... It's a bit of a process. That thing's pretty hot. I don't need to clean it off a bit because my stove is kind of sooty, but it fell right down into place and no tappage needed. That's how I like to see it. Okay, so I got these bearings installed and put the planetary back on and torqued that nut to 200 foot pounds with no shims underneath the bolt. And then with that torque to 200 foot pounds, you turn this three times, at least three times. I did three times in both directions just to be safe. And then it says, um, so I'm gonna loosen, loosen the cap screw and then measure and record the baseline rolling drag with, with the uh, center, center bolt loose. So we're going to go ahead and loosen that and recheck that, that drag. And the next step will be to reinstall or take, take, off the, take off this planetary housing. And then put, um, I think we're going to use some lead sinkers that you use for fishing. Put them on between this and the axle. And then after we get those... We'll retorque it down to, let's see, what does it say here? Um, so we'll re retorque it to 200 foot-pounds, and then rotate at least 12 times in both directions, and make sure that the reading is between 12 and 18 foot-pounds, because we're dealing with the bigger axles here, 12 to 18 foot-pounds over the baseline reading, which is what we recorded, it's what we're gonna record whenever we loosen that 
bolt up again. That'll be the baseline reading. So 12 to 18 foot pounds over that. If we can't get to that, it says increase the foot pounds by in 50 pound increments if the reading is low. And again, rotate 12 times. Once you get the reading correct, you take it apart and you use a micrometer of some sort to measure the thickness of your lead sinkers or lead bowls, whatever you can use. And then you can use that measurement to know how thick to make your stack of washers. And then you put it all together and remeasure stuff to make sure that it's correct, which th that time you'll torque it to 670 foot pounds. And that's pretty much the gist of it. If you want to read some of this to get some more information on exactly how to, uh, to do things if something goes wrong or something's not quite right, you may. But that's the gist of it. Okay, so I'm trying to measure shim thickness here. And here is my um, lead sinker that I put in there and it smashed flat and that measures 139. And so I determined I can make from shims, I can make 136 two different ways, or I can make 140 in a different way, or be 141 the next way. So it says here, increasing a five millimeter shim or 5,000 shim will increase around six foot pounds. And we're on the low side of our rolling drag anyway, so another two to three foot uh, thousands tighter will be just okay. So that's what our plan is. All right, so I got the rolling drag set. Interestingly enough, I had to take out two of these shims, taking out about 10 thousands. Um, not exactly sure why they even tell you to measure with the lead balls because you end up having to reset it anyway um, just by checking your drag because that's the end, end goal is to get your drag set correctly. So possibly the, the lead balls are to help you um, get close to start with, I guess. Anyway, so now we're just going to take this ring off. So I can reseal this, it didn't pop loose, but who wants to take a chance at it being, at it leaking? So I'm just gonna pop that off and check his brake pad. I don't think there's any problem there. He didn't complain about that at least. So we'll do that and we should be ready to go back together. All right, so I got this tractor done here and just gonna go over a few things with you yet. Um, I was doing a video putting this back together, but I didn't then. Um, sorry about that. This, this piece right here gets torqued to 750 foot pounds. So you'll need a torque multiplier for that. I forget what this bolt here is. Um, these bolts here are 110. I do remember that. And otherwise the rest of it, I mean, just hit with a heavy impact, you know, these bolts here and stuff just hit them hard with an impact and make sure they're good and tight. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, not a lot more I can say about this, I guess, but uh, yeah, have fun when you get to doing yours, I guess. After changing that carrier bearing, you need to drive it under 10 miles an hour for at least six hours before proceeding to higher speeds.